Are you excited to build some new features? Welcome to another mini series of Business Central AL programming and we are going to look at how to leverage the control adding object which allows us to add custom functionality to Business Central and it's a custom control let's say and uh, it's used for displaying and modifying data within an iframe of a page. So it will be like uh, an HTML page within Business Central and it's hosted in an iframe. It can display the content of a web page maybe or um, visualize or display a chart or map and even will host a web application. So the prerequisite for this series is you should have some basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which I believe most of us do. And if not, maybe just uh, look for a, a short tutorial that will explain the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript so that you can be up to speed with, um, with it because we are using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML to create our custom functionality using control adding. So it's very key that uh, that part is well handled. Alright, right, so let's look at like this is just an example of a cool feature, and this is what we'll try to implement. Oh, wow. So this is um how is how, how is it named? exciting particle effect so based on the click the particle is generated um from from the the mouse click from the movement of the click of the mouse so these are some of the cool examples that you can be able to create with javascript and not necessarily easy to create with business central or almost impossible let's say that so before we get to this complexity of creating such uh, uh, a JavaScript cool effect, exciting particle effect, let's now just uh, be able to get to create a control add-in. We just define it, briefly look at the properties, trigger a few methods, and then we will go to the next video. So the snippet is T control add-in, and then so since we are trying to look at a particle effect, the name of the control add-in will be the particle uh, control add-in. Uh, definitely it's having some default features here. Then we do have like the height, um, the requested height, this will be the default for the iframe, the maximum minimum height and uh, allowing stretch. So the stretch, uh, vertical height, minimum height and width and then the stretch whether if the content is more than the specified height and width then it can stretch either horizontally or of, uh, vertically stretching and shrinking so we have several other properties we can uh, remember we definitely need to have javascript with the scripts so this is how, where we link the script that will be used and it's a list of scripts to include in the control add-in and it could be a local file or a reference to external file using HTTP or HTTPS. So the content delivery networks, the CDNs, they usually host the minified versions of JavaScript and jQuery. We can link the CDNs here or have it locally um, here on our bin central. The same with style sheets. And you can see the name is scripts. So scripts meaning we are definitely having several style sheets. They are comma separated. You just list them. What style sheets do you need? You can have maybe bootstrap as the style and list them, the minified versions or just the style sheets, and then they'll be listed here. Then we do have a startup script, which will be invoked when the web page is loaded, recreate when the control add-in is recreated and refresh when it's refreshed. Then we have images in case we, we are in need of an image. The, the same with the image. The image can be either locally stored or linked. Uh, 
linked from online then uh, okay so let's just initialize our control add-in then we do have the events so uh the events and the procedures so we need to communicate between business central and javascript and javascript and business central and basically the simple definition here of an event is in the event scenario it's when we need to uh, sort of send information from business central not from javascript to uh, business central all right so and the opposite is true so we can say maybe the event control already and uh, we can have this um, this event and it can have parameters so the event is a method but it's generated via invoking extensibility and when we are saying we are invoking extensibility we are extending business central from javascript so if we want to uh, to communicate from javascript to Business Central, we invoke the extensibility and are able to communicate. From JavaScript, <coughs> we have our startup script here. Let me just shift, hold here. Then we have our control ready. So in our start.js, we just need to initialize the control ready. And I'd like to, this is the place where we do the initialization and sort of for our case is where remember everything even if it's an html uh, document ob uh, object model i think that's the full version of dom we still need to create the html using javascript no wonder the knowledge for javascript html and css is important we use the javascript to create the html and uh, in our startup here what we can basically do uh, Microsoft Dynamics .nav .invoke extensibility and uh, control ready. Just be looking at it in a few. Okay. And this is an object. We are adding an object here to invoke extensibility. So we can be able to pass. Um, any uh, data to Business Central from here. So it invokes an AL trigger of the, um, what is it called, of the Dynamics uh, 365 Business Central service on the page that contains the control add-in. We are invoking the AL trigger from here. So without this invoking extensibility, the AL trigger will not be able to run. and. Uh, from this side here, um, this is an object that we are passing. Okay, so let's leave it simple as it is. And um, get to the business central. Uh, so how do we now, how do we call or how do we, uh, how are we able to now call the control add in Business Central? We can create a page extension, uh, bank account pext dot l and uh, t page extension that will have page extension that will target the maybe the bank account card real quick. So in this case, we need to, in our layouts, we can either have a page that uh, maybe a page, maybe a card part that will have a control add-in and then call it in the fact boxes, but we can also quickly be able to add a layout here and we can say add last in the general tab, for instance, and um, use the user control um the user control action or what is it called keyword <laughs> to define the control adding and simply place your control adding here and uh, here 
so with this we have now a place to invoke our trigger so we can invoke the control uh, ready trigger via the um, uh, via the the page extension or we can even it could be a page but it needs to be in a page and then you use the user control and we invoke it uh, directly so it's just a message to show that it has been invoked from uh, from the control from JavaScript into uh, the business central and we can see that now it's when the it's loaded on the startup script like when the script which is invoked when the web page and the control is loaded so when the control add-in is loaded that's when we invoke the control add-in so let's do a quick test and we should be able to see how the the basic start it's good to understand the pattern of how this thing is working. We define a control add-in using the T control add-in snippet. Specify the values for height and width. These are responsible for the size, sizing of the control add-in. And then once the sizing is catered for, we move into now defining the script that is responsible for running the control add-in so let's test quickly before you do the finishing recap so so invoke control ready so it's it's invoked and uh, done in this way we have the the control add-in tell us that uh so the message the message has run remember we have just opened the page we have not clearly there is no trigger on open page we only have an uh, something added. We have added um, the user control in the the last part of the general, and we have no CSS, so that's why there is nothing displayed there. But we said that the control adding will be in an iframe element, so we should be able to see an iframe of a control adding. So an iframe is used to host. So when you look at this, this is a control add-in. There's a div here. Okay. Nothing appended in. Okay, there it is. Yeah, yeah. So an iframe is uh, hosting. It's used to host a web page. You can have another web page inside a web page. So if you look at this DOM, uh, I hope I'm using the right terms for the web page web developers. So we have an iframe here. So when you click on this, this is where our control adding is rendered. We have rendered it here. When we click on the iframe, we can see that we are having another web page. So we are embedding our custom control. We are having our own web page linked all here. So I'd like us to see the startup script that we have created. Mm, so we see we have the, uh, the recreate script, the other scripts, the onload, refresh. Anyway, never mind. But uh, basically, we, we do have a div that is of ID control adding. So when we want to append the elements, we will come and use this. So we have the body and uh, the HTML. So the HTML element is defined from here and ends here. When we scroll up to the beginning of the document, we can see we do have another HTML this is now for the main business central page that is under display now. But now for our case, we are having the HTML for the control add-in. We are having the HTML displayed uh, in an iframe. So the, the purpose of the iframe is to store 
this and that is how the control add-in is rendered so understanding this way of rendering okay here is our um, script the one that we added the control ready script remember we we only referenced it in the control add-in but we see the microsoft.dynamics.nav.invoke extensibility control ready and it was executed so I am not sure about where, where uh, the issue about whether JavaScript is enabled or not, but I think it should be handled by default by Business Central. But at least the understanding that we are having something embedded inside, we, it's like our, another mini, mini web application inside Business Central. But again, we should follow the guidelines. There's a guideline for font and colors to make sure that we are aligning to the set, set standards for business central and so that it can't be way off when we are having or when we are creating our control add-in it shouldn't be the user shouldn't feel that there are so many chrome elements or so many and um, buttons that are not needed they should just have the more content and the look and feel should retain we shouldn't expect to see some extraneous colors like a red color from nowhere or there's a style guidelines in the documentation for the primary color, secondary color, even the font guidelines so that we can have fonts that still align with the fonts that Business Central is using uh, to make the, the user shouldn't feel that they're out of Business Central. They are going, they have gone to another application. In as much as we are adding functionality, the design is key to make sure that um, it is in alignment. And also another tip is when you're calling external libraries, it's good to call them from the CDN's content delivery networks in minified versions to make sure that the control add-in doesn't bring in any performance issues. Anyway, this is just a lot. There's a lot to speak in terms of the introduction, but uh, of course I'll share a link to the documentation, to the training, to, to the training Microsoft Learn uh, manual. So that's it for this introductory brief it wasn't brief video and i'll see you in the next video when we now be able to try and create the the dom for the control adding in the startup script and we will implement our particles we try and get that cool feature into the control adding all right i'll see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one